A Kumanosai is an ugly, worthless loser who wishes to change the world after watching one motivational video. He plans to become a pure-hearted Grand Priest. However, a little birdie predicts his pathetic future, revealing that he will be a demon king with his own harem due to the job description. In heavy rainfall, a woman drops off a child on the doors of God, hoping that one day he will become strong for when it's time to fulfill his destiny. Years after that day, Kudosai steps into the metropolis city which is filled with technology along with a girl rushing around, flashing her underworld. Akuda moves along after enjoying a peek, as he knows that this kind of thing is normal for only fans girls. After looking around a bit, he finds an old lady in the corner picking her stuff from the ground. Due to his policy to help people, Akuto lends his assistance and insists on carrying her stuff up the staircase. Out of nowhere, the same girl who did a scanty flash a moment ago arrives with a flying kick to his face. Apparently, Junko Hattori assumed that he was your run-in-the-mill robber who preys on elderly people. After apologizing for jumping the gun, Junko makes an assumption based on his attire that Akuto is a student at her academy. Evidently, he is the new transfer student at the academy which is quite an achievement in itself. This is also recognized by Junko, as there aren't many transfer students who get admitted due to the difficulty level of the transfer exam. During her journey to the high school, Junko mentions that students from their school can work for the government. Adding to this, he shares the dream of becoming a grand priest and changing the world. This might be difficult, as Junko unveils that priests must live righteously and not enjoy flashes. Nonetheless, she decides to help him reach this goal because her family handles the national security of the empire alongside worshipping their religion. As their journey comes to an end, she forms a friendship bond with him through a very sacred ritual of their family. Junko also gives him a disclaimer alert because he's the first male she's done this with which means something right. On the academy grounds, Junko gives him the tour of the gigantic academy which basically feels like a Harry Potter rip-off. Lastly, she drops him by the nurse's building which happens to be the largest faculty in the school. As it turns out, the head nurse Mitsuko Tore reveals that many students overuse their magic which causes immeasurable injury to their body. Furthermore, the faculty also researches on various topics of science and magic. One of the results of this research is the talking bird which reviews a student's health and predicts their future occupation. As the birdie does its job, Mitsuko shares that the bird has always been 100% accurate in its predictions. On Akuno's turn, the birdie casually drops it on everyone that he will be the future demon king, just like the one from 100 years ago who waged a war against humanity for mysterious reasons. Immediately, all the students present at the scene start panicking like there was a guy with a bag full of C2 in a room. Simultaneously, Akuto can't believe that his dream of becoming a priest is in trash. Later that day, Mitsuko, who was also his homeroom teacher, introduces the new demon king to their class, making everyone shit in their pants. Akuto knows that even his sworn friend Junko is giving him the locks and so he takes the stage to make a grand speech. Although one of the students mentions that his Tate speech is the same one the Demon King gave 100 years ago, which makes the situation worse for him. Ultimately, the teacher tells him to shut his trap and take a seat at the back of the class. Before the official lesson begins, Mitsuko mentions that their class will need a new class head. Although she makes a suggestion that Junko should remain in that position as always, However, Hiroshi stands up in defense of the new demon king, pointing out that he should be the rightful heir to their class. Instantly, Akuta notices that she is incredibly pissed about this situation which forces him to refuse the offer. Instead, he goes for a low-key role like the class janitor. Shocked, Mitsuko reveals that the class janitor is someone who destroys evidence of classified information on behalf of the academy, further proving that he is the new demon king. Naturally, he attempts to talk his way out of the situation, but it only backfires on him. At this point, Junko challenges him to a duel, as she is pissed off about the fact that he played her like a toy. Right after, she cold-heartedly starts attacking him without any warning, but unexpectedly he dodges them all. In the heat of the moment, Akuto shows his demon king Reese to calm the situation. In that instance, she pushes him back in order to unleash a deadly attack. Surprisingly, he counters it with one hand and in doing so blows up the entire classroom which also alarms Lily Shireishi from the disciplinary committee. In the midst of night, Hiroshi takes him to the girl's dormitory so that he can apologize for this morning. However, things backfire once again as Junko labels him a creep in front of all the girls. Following this, she madly goes after him to land a strong attack. In the midst of the chase, Akuto encounters a strange girl named Kina Soga who thinks of him as a prince. This pisses off Junko even more because she believes that Akuto is a womanizer. In order to stop her attack, he unleashes a powerful magic spell which blows a hole in the ground. As a result, a surveillance agent named Karon comes to check on stuff. Back in the day, Akuto stops a young girl from crying her eyes out by giving her a pigeon-shaped pendant. In the end, they part ways due to his studies in the city. In the present, Akuto realizes that Karon is an android model known as Liridan. 
She proves his hypothesis by using a magical device to heal Junko in an instant. Upon regaining consciousness, Junko cries like a baby and runs to her dorm. In the meantime, Koro informs him that she was assigned to be his surveillance agent under the principal's supervision just a few seconds ago. According to the procedure, he must answer all her questions regarding any future incidents from now on. Immediately, the girl behind Akudo removes all the commandos and disappears on them. Strangely enough, not even her location signal could be found by Koron. Although, she is surely a student that studies in his class. Nonetheless, she takes the matter at hand directly to the principal of the academy. Later in the office, Koron reports that Akudo didn't have any ill intentions against Junko or any of the other classmates. Apparently, she has the ability to analyze a person's emotion at sight. After hearing the detailed report, the principal laughs and assures Akuto that he will be treated like a normal student, even if he surely commits a ton of crimes in the future as the Demon King. Just to take precautions, he asks the government to lead him a bodyguard alongside a surveillance agent who will watch him all day long. As the meeting ends, Mitsuko consoles him into believing that the government is considerate of him, which is the same lie they feed us. Anyway, she is more interested in knowing about his special kind of magic, which accurately tears women only clothes. With a straight face, he links this power to the title Demon King. Although the reason behind it is still vague as he only aimed to defend himself. This brings Mitsuko to the conclusion that his mana controlling capabilities are off the charts. Before leaving, she hands him a student handbook which can telepathically connect him to students around campus. Unexpectedly, Koron follows him to the boys' dormitory for surveillance purposes. However, the next morning, Hiroshi informs him that rumors regarding the Demon King having an official mistress have been flying around school. In the midst of their conversation, the female dorm leader Fujiko Atu introduces herself and shows peculiar interest in him. In class, rather than focusing on their studies, the students constantly eye on Koron because of her cuteness. To get some privacy, he goes into the restroom where he contacts Fujiko for some advice. Apparently, he wants her to become the mediator between him and Junko. Regarding this matter, the two of them decide to meet at the back of the mountain. To make things easier, Fujiko informs him about Koron's rabbit-like tail, which can turn her off in an instant. Later that day, he asks Hiroshi to give him directions to the location. Instantly, this three-year-old assumes that he intends on clapping Koron. To make things worse, Koron begins to tease as she reveals that it will be her first time. During their walk to the mountain, Akuto proves to be the dumbest demon king because he ignores the danger sign right in front of him. Along the way, he aims to get a sneak peek on Tail, although she seems to think that he wants to peek at her green striped scanty. Suddenly, out of nowhere, a giant dog appears in front of them who is physically modified using mana procedures. Naturally, Koron shoots without a single hesitation, but her firearm does no damage. The dog then picks up Akuto and aims to eat him alive. However, in that moment, he somehow utilizes his powers to extract the mana within the dog and transform him back. Amazed, Koron mentions that this phenomenon is noteworthy because no magic user has ever performed such a procedure. In the aftermath of the battle, the dog sniffs out Kina from within the bushes. However, she runs away from the dog in fear using an invisibility cloak. At that moment, he takes advantage of the opportunity to turn Koron off. Simultaneously, Fujiko arrives on the scene assuring him that Junko won't refuse her request. Quest. She also understands that things tend to backfire on him each time. As their conversation progresses, she mentions that the Student Council Disciplinary Committee has been looking for fresh blood and this position would be great for him. Moments before leaving, she gives him two magic pills which can help two people understand each other without fail. Despite their danger, she insists that he must keep it on him if things go south. With the meeting over, he pulls the tail to reboot Koron's operation only to learn that she has forgotten everything about the event. Right after, he notices the same pigeon-like pendant flying around, making him realize that Kina is the girl from back then. The two of them then begin their friendship journey with Akuto's own little ritual, which might put him in jail. Later at night, Koron calls Junko to inform that she must meet with Akuto in private, otherwise there will be consequences for her. Quite frankly, this chick wants to control the future demon king for her own petty use. In her childhood days, Fujiko was pretty close to her big brother, almost as overflow type close. However, one day he went and got his bone killed on a secret job. Ultimately, her mother labeled her brother as an incompetent douchebag, which forced Fujiko to become stronger. Back in the present, she sets up a deadly trap for Akuto with the help of some delinquents at the academy. Meanwhile, in the bathtub, Hiroshi compliments Akuto for defeating the visible dawn of the academy. As it turns out, there are some students in the academy who use black magic at night in order to assert dominance. As a strong person with a sense of justice, Junko played her role in handling these creeps, thus earning the name the Visible Dawn. Although some might also know an invisible dawn at the academy who is rarely seen by the top students. After a while, he goes outside only to find Koron waiting in the corner, 
ready to measure his Excalibur's length for research purposes. Moments later, he receives a call from Fujiko informing that Junko will be meeting him in the third basement of the old barracks. Following this, he goes to the student council office where the president Lily mentions that delinquents tend to fight with disciplinary committee members in order to prove that they are the shit. This is also the reason that literally no one at their school wants to be a disciplinary member voluntarily unless they want to show off their power like the Demon King. Once again, Akuto's intentions backfire on him. However, at this point, he can't back down from the job because of their eagerness. After his class ends, he loads the gun with the magic pills just in case things don't turn out as planned. Although right now, turning Corona off is his number one priority. With no alternative, he slightly moves in to reach for the tail. Simultaneously, Kina knocks on his window and ruins the whole thing. As it turns out, she wants him to hold onto the rice cooker because her dorm lady won't allow it. She begins going on and on about the rice cooker just like Uncle Roger. However, Akuto keeps on refusing her request because she will continue to visit him otherwise. A while later, he finally manages to get rid of Kina and also turn off Koron, allowing him to complete his tasks without hindrance. As stated by Fujiko, he follows the direction into an old building which was created a hundred years ago during the last war with the Demon King. Unexpectedly, there are a few goons jump on him from behind and whack his head to knock him unconscious. They also have beaten Hiroshi into a pulp wiki that raises his anger to an extreme level. Unfortunately for them, this situation gives Akuto the best chance to experiment on his new type of Demon King powers. Utilizing his magic, he breaks their bones left and right with just a thought. Still, he isn't done with them as Akuto intends on ending this by defeating the boss once and for all. As the situation intensifies, the redhead brings out a long chain to attack but even that backfires on him. With a deadly and calm look in his eyes, he snaps his leg bone in half. Unexpectedly, Junko arrives on the scene at the most inconvenient of times. Naturally, she assumes that he intends to dominate everyone in the academy using the authority of the disciplinary committee. He also might have buttered her up just for the sake of gaining everyone's favor. At this point, Akuto knows that using the potion that Fujiko gave him is the only option, but it turns out to be empty. Furthermore, the sight of the gun angers Junko even more and forces her to escape without a trace. Back in the dorm, he shares everything that has been happening behind Kuron's back. Thankfully, she can't put him in prison due to her memory being wiped out clean. Still, according to Mitsuko, he now has to fight Junko alongside the entire school because they want to subdue him. At night, Junko curses herself for being manipulated by the future Demon King. Although, if that was not the case, then she would have happily lived with him. The very next morning, Junko announces that everyone in the school will work together to subdue the Demon King who has been working towards world domination. However, this process will only be applied for the next hour. Hiroshi wants to help him because he's the reason all of this is happening to Akuto. Yet, he insists that he should just stay out of his way. Initially, Akuto dodges all the attacks and successfully escapes from sight. However, things get intense as the entire school surrounds him with Junko leading the charge. She thinks that Akuto is the most horrible person because he injured those goons without showing a single emotion. This is something even Akuto himself didn't know existed inside him. As she is about to deliver the finishing blow, Kina intercepts the battle. She announces that despite his dark side, Akuto is a very genuine and caring person. Plus, Junko likes him very much for this very detail. As expected, the entire school turned against them, as they think that Junko led them into a couple's quarrel. Luckily, Koron comes to the rescue by firing a powerful shot filled with rice. Back at home, Koron reveals that the magic pills traces of black magic which could make a person pledge their loyalty to someone. As an alternative, she used those medicines in the rice, making Fujiko's plan backfire on her. Following the school curriculum, Akuto, Hiroshi, and the other students gather in the school grounds for their practical classes. When everyone is asked to pair up in groups of two by Fujiko, Akuto suggests that Hiroshi should be a part of his team. However, he thinks that Akuto deserves a strong partner, unlike him. Moments later, Fujiko takes the class to the practical site where everyone starts throwing balls of magical powers. Junko, who is assigned to be his partner, explains that this exercise will help to control the flow of mana. She creates a small magic ball at him and mentions that he needs to be gentle with it. However, the moment Akuto throws the ball back at Junko, it explodes like a nuke and tears her clothes for some fan service. In the end, Mitsuko calms Akuto by revealing that Junko just fainted from the shock of the explosion. She also suggests that he must visit the mental disciplinary room in order to learn more control. Instantly, Hiroshi sticks his nose as he wants to know if Mitsuko is planning to send Akuto in the cell where many students have died. With a shoe to his face, she assures him that everything will be fine. Eventually, he was packing for the trip to the actual abyss according to the school requirements. Admitting to the process, Koron mentions that they will go together in the mental cell in order to catch up on their clapping sessions. Meanwhile, in the female dorm, Fujiko begins potting her scheme for the upcoming day which makes her dead brother ask about her evilness. This takes her back to the day when she found her brother in a casket. Unexpectedly, he died on a mission 
Searching for some information at the old school ruins, the officials used necromancy to extract some information. However, even they couldn't find anything which meant that he ran away in fear. On the morrow, Akuto prepares to enter the chamber alone with no disturbance. Unfortunately, Koron decides to chime in like you're sticking your nose in other people's business. A while later, he discovers that even Kina came with him inside the room, making matters more difficult. As it turns out, she only wanted to deliver a nice box of lunch, but the gate closed on her. Simultaneously outside, Fujiko plans to hit in with a hallucination agent that will make him pledge his loyalty. Back inside the room, the three of them find a strange map of the school. Despite this, he doesn't pay any heed to it and starts training. Moments later, Kina begins having the urge to piss, which also explains the reason the school asked him to bring a waterproof bag. Although she doesn't want to man up and use the bag, instead she begins banging on the door, which makes Fujiko think that Akuto has gone nuts. Assuming that there isn't a need for magic, Fujiko opens the mental door manually from outside only to get pushed back by Kina. She recognizes the handwriting on the map, which forces her to take the map from him. However, her brother doesn't recall any memory of creating the map with his own hands. As she steps into the hall to think about the origins of the map, a strange girl named Aiko Teruya shares her condolences with Fujiko for not being able to subdue the demon. Instantly, Fujiko realizes that Aiko is not from the academy, but her attention is grabbed by the mob surrounding her room. Apparently, someone stole the map from her room and started posting copies of it around school. Instantly, she goes to confront Akuto about the situation, thinking that he must be plotting something with the map. However, Karon points out that the culprit is none other than Kina who wants adventures to find the One Piece. Unexpectedly, this map issue became enlarged as 18 students managed to receive critical injury by some sort of monster in the location. In order to avoid any further mishaps, Lily orders Akuto to address the entire school and announce a ban on this so-called adventure. Unfortunately, his speech goes sideways as people start to question the fact he's been hanging out with Kina and Junko. Furthermore, Hiroshi suggests that the Demon King deliberately plotted this quest in order to find new subordinates for himself. Amongst all the students, Eiko jumps on his head, giving him a nice sniff of her scanty. She then forces him to take on the quest and investigate the map himself. For some reason, Lily tells him to come in and out of the location and make up a fake story for everyone. However, he is determined to find the truth together with Hiroshi, Koron, and Aiko. At the entrance of the ruins, Aiko scans the map only to find a strange name engraved on it. After a long walk downstairs, they come across a graveyard of the dead from a hundred years ago. According to the map's information, they must find the grave of the man that was mentioned in the map. Still, Akuto strongly states that they should respect the dead, but this kind of attitude is a big turnoff for Aiko, especially since she came all the way just to glance at his harem creating Riz. Out of nowhere, a strange black tornado appears in the graveyard, warning them about the journey ahead. Simultaneously outside, Junko drops by Akuto's room only to find Kina dozing off in his bed. She informs her that Akuto has gone out together with Hiroshi, Koron, and Aiko, which is the biggest red flag for Junko. Meanwhile, back in the cave, Aiko doesn't give a fudge about the black fog and attacks without thinking. All that does is get her injured to the point of death, which in turn unleashes the Demon King's true powers. After Akuto defeats it with a single shot, Eiko gets back up and clings to him, saying that it was all a prank to test his strength. With the Black Fog defeated, Akuto finds the grave of the person mentioned on the map. Inside it, he finds a strange video recorder that was owned by Fujiko's brother. He plays a recording which states that he must find three mysterious items in a research center to make something appear. Unbeknownst to them, Fujiko is closely watching the entire adventure, but still her brother refuses any knowledge of the recording device, though she thinks he's been lying to her ever since. In the meantime, Kina appears in the room with the intention of following Akuto to the ruins. On the other hand, Junko is making her way to the ruins, knowing that Eiko is a government spy who might badly hurt Akuto. Unexpectedly, she steps onto a trap and falls down to a mysterious place. Back underground, the team finds an abandoned city that was burned a hundred years ago in the war. During their walk, a bunch of metal knight armors suddenly begin attacking them out of nowhere. In the heat of the moment, Hiroshi aims to become the hero by beating metal with some smaller weapon. This forces Akuto to release his true powers once again and defeat the knight. Naturally, he scolds Hiroshi for acting recklessly and putting himself in danger. Hiroshi thinks that Akuto should keep in mind that others are not as strong as him, making Akuto apologize for his mistake. Following this event, they find another clue in the ruins which leads them to a strange cave. Inside it, they find a hot spring with a temperature of 41 Celsius, which is perfect for the skin. Being the Demon King, Akuto goes to the other side of the spring for further investigation. Yet Aiko jumps the gun once again, saying that he should act as his title and clap for him. At this point, Aiko reveals that the treasure inside the ruins belongs to the Demon King. Simultaneously, 
Junko appears out of nowhere and begins attacking Aiko for being a spy. However, she states that someone sent her to test whether Akuto is ready for her destiny or not. As the two girls continue to fight head-on, a giant wolf appears to eat them alive. Thankfully, Akuto regains his strength at the last moment to punch it in the face. He tightly holds on to Junko, which tells Aiko who's the future wife of the Demon King, making her all grumpy. In the end, she gives him a mysterious key placed near the spring which would mean that obtained the three mysterious items. Following this event, the rest of the gang joins them in the spring. Curious, Fujiko accidentally activates the teleportation magic circle. Unexpectedly, all of them are transported to the lowest level of the underground facility, which is also the last Demon King's estate. There, Lily and the others from the student council appear out of thin air in monster disguises. Apparently, they were the ones who set up the game to entertain the students. However, their plan of diversion backfires when Fujiko goes inside the estate without any prior warnings. She also wakes up the dragon Peterhausen who had been sleeping for the last hundred years, waiting for the next Demon King to arrive. He decides to judge Fujiko's potential as his new master. Meanwhile, Lily warns Akudo to keep his distance from the dragon or else the dragon will confirm his identity as the new Demon King. Suddenly, everyone somehow witnessed a flashback from a few years ago. In it, Fujiko's brother was being killed by a blonde guy. Ultimately, he decides to save Fujiko regardless of what he might become in the future. With raging eyes, he fights with the dragon and comes out victorious, shocking everyone on the scene. Evidently, the dragon acknowledges him as the new demon king of the modern age, but he thinks that his name needs changing. In the evening before their beach school, Koron briefly reports on the new demon king's behavior as someone who likes clapping more than food. Adhering to this, the douchebags order her to raise him with a Sekura chest. A few days later, the class attends the beach school. However, Kina notices that he's been down even after seeing swimsuits. Honestly, Issei would have been on fire right now. Anyways, Koron decides to work her charms with a middle school swimsuit outfit. This reminds Akuto that she has been acting strangely ever since Mitsuko informed him that attending the beach house won't be possible for him. That night, she slid into his bed and began moving those hands in the right place, confusing him to death. However, he tells her to quit acting like a brat and sleep in her own bed. The following morning, Koron wakes him up in a cosplay costume, playing the role of his little sister. Apparently, she thinks that he likes it when things are rough, and so she kicks him in the balls a few times. Although, Akuto makes it clear that he doesn't get turned on by such audacities. Adding to this, Akuto assures Koron that her beauty is very appealing, but he wants to respect women with pure affection. Yet she continues playing different cosplay characters throughout the day, hoping that he will fall for one eventually. At this point, he runs off to Peterhausen's lair to find some peace and quiet. There he finds Kina sleeping with the dragon like it's her daddy. Moments after, Koron enters the lair wanting to know if he's in love with Kina. However, he just evades the question and keeps his girl type a secret from everyone. Back in the present, Koron removes her swimsuit for Akuto to apply lotion on her body. However, Junko blocks everyone's view before things get to the good part. Upon seeing her jealousy, Koron pushes his hand onto her knockers, creating a whole new scene in front of him. At this point, he addresses the audience to clear the air, but as always, that just gives rise to more rumors regarding him and the other girls. After a while, Akuto apologizes to Junko in private and asks if she will fool around with him in the sea. Together, the three of them play into the sea and have fun. During this moment, he feels relieved because Junko has been acting all stiff ever since stepping in the academy. As the conversation progresses, she asks him to use her first name just like he does with Kina. Out of nowhere, Koron comes from behind and undresses her in order to make the moment. This annoys Akuto to such an extent that he scolds her for ruining his life. Instantly, she makes a lousy face and promises that their relationship will be nothing more than a surveillance agent and subject. Even Junko notices that she has been acting all weird as of now. Later in the evening, Nakuto constantly feels like someone is watching him ever since stepping on the island, but then Kina diverts his attention towards Hiroshi. He follows him around only to discover that his parents live on the island. Still, he does not seem happy as someone who is about to meet their folks. In that moment, he reveals that there has been a stupid legend on their island that has been passed down for over a century. Apparently, folklore says that a giant beast will arise from the middle of the lake, and with it will come a hero who will defeat both the demon king alongside the beast. At night, as everyone enjoys the party, Akuto informs Koron about his plan to flush out the person following him. Meanwhile, back at the academy, Fujiko shares her grand plan of becoming the demon king's wife in the future with Peterhausen. Moments later, Lily arrives on the scene with some new information regarding Akuto. As a matter of fact, she knows that the old losers in the government are using Koron to seduce him. Furthermore, some mysterious powers are planning to use him for black magic. If that happens, she will use all her power to fight against all of them. After she leaves, Peterhausen tells Fujiko to share this information with Akuto right this second. Unfortunately, she can't connect with him over the student handbook due to some signal jamming. As an alternative, she tells Kina about everything, but she's too drunk to pass it on to Akuto. She only reveals a few details regarding 
regarding a man trying to kill him or something. Out of nowhere, Kuron gets shot in the back by someone. Back on the first day of Academy, the little birdie predicted that Kuroshi will be the future hero only in front of Mitsuko. In the present, Kuron continues to ask about his feelings towards Kina, because his answer will be crucial to her mission. Akuto understands her hidden intentions and assures her that there is no future for them. In doing so, he makes it clear that her mission was a failure which forces her to exit the area. Simultaneously, Kina regains her consciousness and becomes sober, remembering everything that Fujiko told her. As it turns out, Kuron was told to seduce Akuto by all means, otherwise her mission will be cancelled altogether. On the other hand, Hiroshi's sister Yukiko asks about the Demon King in his class. Naturally, he vouches for Akuto, revealing that he's a very nice man and his best friend. At that moment, they overhear a bunch of villagers talking shit about their father who thinks that Hiroshi is the future hero. Curious about the Demon King, Yukiko goes up to Akuto to confirm her suspicions about him. However, Akuto just straight up refuses to acknowledge the fact that he's the Demon King. Instantly, Hiroshi comes between them and starts apologizing for his sister's behavior. This gives her the opportunity to bring up the fact that Hiroshi is the future hero. Still, Akuto insists that he is neither the Demon King nor does Hiroshi want to become the hero, making her cry in denial. As Hiroshi and Kina follow Yukiko into the village, Junko points out that he forcefully snatched hope from the poor girl. Meanwhile, both Kina and Hiroshi make their way to the legendary lake, unable to find Yukiko. There, Hiroshi reveals that the lake is in fact connected to the ocean, and at the bottom lies the demon beast. Suddenly, the beast makes a loud noise, alarming the two of them about its existence. Hiroshi continues explaining that there is a shrine at the bottom of the lake. Inside the shrine, there is a dagger only the hero can pull out, making him the future King Arthur of Japan. In that moment, they notice a strange man known as Mr. X using some sort of sound to awaken the sea monster which apparently is the live-sized sea cucumber. Following this, he captures Yukiko, as she has witnessed the summoning ritual. Angered, Hiroshi steps into the battle only to discover that magic cannot be activated in front of the beasts. Taking advantage of the diversion, Hina steps in from behind, thinking that she's invisible to everyone and gets herself captured. In the end, even Hiroshi is rendered him useless, allowing Mr. X to beat the living shit out of him and throw him into the ocean. Later at night, Mr. X attacks the city with the help of the demon monster. He openly displays the two girls in front of Akuto and Junko, revealing that he has also killed the little boy. This angers him so much that Akuto begins punching him without the use of any magic. He releases both the girls from the chains using nothing but brute force. However, things take another course when Mr. X activates his anti-magic noise-making device which begins sucking all the magic power in the area. Still, Junko assumes that Akuto won't lose his powers no matter what happens because he has been using unlimited amounts of mana to enhance his physical body. Evidently, Mr. X proves her theory to be false as Akuto can use magic as long the anti-magic sound is in place. Furthermore, he can use the sound of the shroud to increase his strength an unlimited number of times. Utilizing this power, he beats the hell out of Akuto and knocks him to the ground. Still, Junko and Kina are only too few that treat him like a normal person, which means he can't lose them at this stage. Meanwhile, Deep in the lake, Hiroshi finally becomes one with his destiny, as he manages to pull the anti-magic weapon from the shrine. Back on the surface, Akuto stands back on his feet and realizes that the sound is coming from his soul. This means that Akuto can easily counter this move using his own soul noise. Naturally, Mr. X is impressed by the fact that Akuto remembers the art of anti-magic. Although he thinks that the art of war might suit him even better, in the heat of battle, he attacks the two defenseless girls only to enrage him. Luckily. Kuron returns from the surveillance agency in time to save them. She also knocks Mr. X down in order to divert their attention towards the giant monster. Unexpectedly, a strange hero appears out of nowhere and kills the beast using strange weaponry. He also fights with the Demon King in order to kill Mr. X once and for all. Akuno finds it unnecessary and convinces him to back down. Moments later, Hiroshi comes back to the area, saying that the hero named Brave saved him. Somewhere in a facility, Aikido hubs Buchiru Yamato the blondie who killed Fujiko's brother some time ago in the ruins. He was sure that Akuto would have died in the ruins the moment the dragon awakened from sleep. However, his growing potential rewrote the future through immeasurable mana fluctuations. Like any other girl, Aiko begins complaining about his obsession, but Blondie tells her fudge off. Meanwhile, Akuto recalls that he gave a very expensive pigeon-shaped pendant to a girl in the church who wouldn't stop crying. Apparently, she was there to replace him as the nun's new student, giving him the opportunity to explore the world. Before leaving, they promise to meet each other in the future. Suddenly, Kina arrives on the scene, waking him from deep sleep. Obviously, he wants to know if Kina is the same girl he gave the pendant 10 years ago in the church. However, Kina deflects the question because her memories of the past are quite vague. As their conversation progresses, Akuto shares that his birthday is on the 25th of December. At least that is the day he was found abandoned on the church door. Just like him, Kina mentions that her self-appointed birthday is coming up soon and they should celebrate it together. 
Deep in the ruins, Fujiko spends most of her time subduing demon beasts in the lair of the previous demon king. Apparently, she wants Akuno to rule the world which would allow him to clap her every day. Out of nowhere, the demon snail acts as a monster straight out of some anti-rated anime as it puts its tentacles all around her. Initially, Fujiko enjoys the once-in-a-lifetime experience and then she employs a magical grenade to stop the beast. Despite this, the demon beast wants some more of that booty which earns him another nuke. Amidst all this, she finds a demon beast egg. Although for some reason, she decides to hide the egg from Peterhausen. Nonetheless, he informs Fujiko that various powerful demon beasts must have started to act because Akudo is near his awakening. This fact is confirmed by the TV channels as they mention that the hero named Brave has been fighting demon beasts around the kingdom. Akuno strikes a discussion with Hiroshi, pointing out that the Imperial forces won't be happy about Brave gaining the public favor. However, he believes that justice is more important than petty reasons like favoring the people. In the middle of this, Koron mentions that Kina is on the 13th bowl of rice. After eating her fill, she flies outside of the window in order to catch a nap in her room. As she leaves, Hiroshi reveals that she has good academic skills, but her magic is dog shit. Koron adds to this, revealing that mana capacity is something that can be seen as God's favor on someone. This means that not being able to use much mana becomes the cause of discrimination against oneself. Upon hearing this, Akudo shares his thought of changing the world for the better with his hands. Immediately, Koron sarcastically points out that he wants to change the system by becoming the Grand Priest. Yet to him, this is the shortcut to achieving his dream. Unbeknownst to him, Hiroshi reveals that this is exactly the same ambition of the Demon King from 100 years ago. The following day, he goes to pick up Kina for her class. However, she instantly vanishes and makes a run for it. Naturally, Akuto follows her around campus, but she goes commando, forcing him to call it quits. Ultimately, he decides to blackmail her into attending her classes by making sure their relationship will end if she doesn't comply. However, she turns the situation around by giving him a long hug, which gives rise to new rumors. Even Junko refuses to lend her help, as she believes Kina has the right to make her own decisions. Still, she regrets acting like a total beach in front of him. Late at night, Fujiko attempts to hatch the egg of the demon beasts with various methods. In the end, she places it in a hot pot and calls it a day. Unexpectedly, Kina comes inside the room and takes it away in order to make egg fried rice. The very next day, she gives the egg to Karone, expecting that she will cook it well. Intentionally, Akuta places his hand on the egg which enlarges its size and forces it to hatch. The demon beasts terrorize everyone in the situation as Akuto's attacks only make it grow stronger. Eventually, Fujiko appears on the scene and forces the chicken to sit like a dog. However, he puts her in his mouth before she finishes flexing her skills. Afterwards, the demon beasts fly out into the city which forces Hiroshi to transform into a brave. Luckily, he saves his favorite actress from the demon beast. In doing so, he earns a nice little kiss on the lips. Honestly, I am glad he isn't the twink everyone thought him to be. When the whole situation ends, Akuto delivers a brief report to Lily and the others, making sure that they shit their pants worrying about the government's next move. Back in his childhood days, a rich philanthropist donated a lot of money to the church, although he refuses to receive any gratification because it is his responsibility as a believer. However, Akuto comes along and insists that the person should be shown gratitude in a proper manner. He believes that the concept of God is just man-made in order to keep peace. Unfortunately, the nuns force him to apologize for the transgression, which makes him want to become stronger. In the present, Junko receives a call from her father regarding her arranged marriage with Akuto. Immediately, she begins a monologue with herself, stating all the objections that he will put forward. Suddenly, Corona appears on the scene to lend a hand in revealing the truth about their marriage, but the idea is instantly shut down by her. During lunch hours, she nervously invites Akuto and Hiroshi to her house for some political purposes. As his surveillance agent, Koron states that she will also accompany him. Later in the evening, he overhears the principal talking with the same blondie from before about his current job. Apparently, he works for the Cabinet of Information who are the same people responsible for the attack on Hiroshi's home island. Nonetheless, the blondie reveals that demon beasts have been acting up lately due to the mana emanating from Akuto's body. He also points out that the Demon King does not even realize his own responsibility. As their summer vacations, Akuto accompanies accompanies Junko along with the others back to her home. Yet his mind is still thinking about the responsibility the blondie told him about which leads him into speaking out loud saying that he will accept his duty. Unbeknownst to him, Junko takes this declaration in a very wrong direction. Upon reaching the station, Hiroshi and everyone else learns that Junko's little sister is Yuko, the famous teen idol who kissed him in the dark. On the way, Yuko asks Hiroshi about the characteristics of Akuto, because she senses a strange demon beast inside him. As a matter of fact, she is quite susceptible to these kinds of things ever since a demon beast bit her. At their house, his father talks about the marriage in subtle words, but as always this dumb fudge don't realize a thing which leads him into a trap. That night in the hot spring, Junko wonders if he's been misunderstanding everything that is happening. Ultimately, she decides to clear things up with him after the bath. In the dead of night, she goes to his room to offer up her body and soul. However, Akuto refuses the idea as he believes she's being forced. 
In that instance, Shumpo clarifies the situation which has led them to this moment. As expected of the clueless demon king, Akuto suggests that he will refuse the marriage proposal if she's being forced into it. Unexpectedly, this makes her cry and storm out of the room. Out of nowhere, a group of men attack him for manipulating Junko into marrying him. Naturally, he runs into the forest only to find Aiko waiting for him to join the Teruya family and marry her. She also reveals that her father, the Grand Priest, has ordered a few assassins to kill off the redhead. This reveals the wrath of Akuto's anger upon the world. Simultaneously, Yuko attacks him from behind because he made her sister cry. She accuses him for being the worst man alive and a complete dork. However, he isn't concerned with some only fan model's opinion about him. Meanwhile, back at the academy, a bunch of assassins attack Kina on her birthday. Unexpectedly, Blondie comes to the rescue in the nick of time. With silk instances of sword skills, he sliced everyone up left and right. Afterwards, Akuto is shown in the dorm room by a strange portal. In that moment, Yamato reveals that Kina is the principle of identity who can allow a person to rule over the gods. Apparently, they want a single body to rule over them and mediate discussions. However, the gods refuse his rule because he wanted to release them but they were afraid. In order to avoid such an outcome, the gods must either kill him or the principle of identity herself. This declaration angers Akuto to an extreme extent as Yamato wants to to use Kina for his own plot. Instantly, the fight between them begins with an unpredictable slash attack from Yamato which severs his arm. However, Akuto regenerates the arm in the next moment, proving that he is the worst kind of monster. Suddenly, Fujiko arrives on the scene with a bunch of demon monsters by her side, revealing that they will head to Akuto's every command. As the battleground is surrounded by demon beasts, Yamato claims that Akuto will eventually destroy the world. At the same time, Hiroshi approaches the city, knowing that the demon king is in big trouble. Somewhere inside a building, the grand priests of the Teruida family inform Aiko about Yamato's betrayal. Unexpectedly, she kills her own father in the middle of the conversation, proving that her loyalty lies with Yamato. At the same time, Junko's father Yozo accuses Akuto for being the one behind the murder of the Grand Priests. Despite this fact, she doesn't want to believe any of the reports as Akuto isn't the man everyone makes him out to be. Surprisingly, Junko's grandmother gives her a sacred sword of their family that hasn't been drawn for ages. However, she believes that Junko can draw it if she follows her heart above all else. Back on the battlefield, Yamato utilizes his special sword to knock Akuto back several feet away. Somehow the weapon decreases the speed of his mana regeneration which forces Fujiko to make a strategic retreat. She wants to take him to the old ruins where his ultimate weapon, Hitterhausen, is waiting. Along the way, the principal stops Yamato from following his students and terrorizing them. In the meantime, Lily intercepts the rest of them, pointing out that Akuto has made a mess of the academy. She will let them pass just this once, but in the future, they will be enemies if he continues the rebellious nature. At this point, shinobi from the two great families gather together in order to fight with the demon beasts. As the new grand priests, Aiko leads the meeting of the two major clans. Clearly, she wants the sacred sword held by the Hattori family. To achieve this goal, she assigns the two sisters to the front lines without any backup. However, the media reports that the two of them wish to fight alone, which would safeguard the Teruya family from any responsibility. Still, Brave lands on the scene, saying that he won't let Yuko fall into danger. He also knows that Akuto is only concerned about Kina's safety. Inside the ruins, Peterhausen greets the demon king in excitement, as he intends to take back the throne and awaken his true power. In that moment, Akuto is reminded of all the moments the two of them shared with each other. Before stepping onto his throne, he declares that he will kill God and take back Kina's freedom. Back in the forest, the old principal unleashes the thousand seals on his body and in doing so regains the power from a hundred years ago. However, before their fight begins, a giant tremor hits everyone as Akuto soars through the sky along with his dragon. Following the orders of the Grand Priest, Junko makes his way on top of the dragon but still she can't draw the sacred blade. In the heat of the moment, Junko points out that Akuto is a big man who doesn't give a fudge about her. Upon realizing her true feelings, Akuto assures her that they will sort things out once the fight is over. Right after, Hiroshi enters the battle and with his mana can't Canceling weapon lands a powerful blow on the dragon. This excites Peterhausen, as never once in his lifespan someone gave him a scar. At the same time, Aiko orders Junko and Yuko to infiltrate the academy and destroy the device that has been controlling the demon beasts. In the sky, the battle between the hero and the demon king intensifies, thus forcing Hiroshi to activate his anti-demon king mode. To make matters worse, the most famous fleet of the imperial army opens a barrage of fires on him. On the ground, the principal states that none of Yamato's words can be trusted at this point because he wanted to take the place of the Demon King himself. Apparently, he is doing all this because of those who once shared the same characteristics of Kina Soba a century ago. Simultaneously, inside the academy, something comes over Kina as she starts acting all weird and philosophical. She wants to know about Fujiko's thoughts on the current battle outside and whether they are sad or not. Without any hesitation, Fujiko reveals that men from Anon like fighting more than women with big knockers, everyone except SC. Back on the battlefield, the army fleet crashes straight into Akuto, hoping that he will be incinerated. 
Somehow, in the distant future, Yamato becomes a time traveler whose only goal was to pursue the principle of reality. Yet, he never achieved his goal until now when things are looking good. Naturally, Fujiko believes that Akuto has been killed by the explosion. However, Akina assures her that he is more than just safe. Meanwhile, outside, Yamato prepares to deal a finishing blow and end this century-long friendship, but Hiroshi comes in his way. He knows that Yamato created the hero device because his own powers weren't enough to kill the Demon King. To avoid any bloodshed, he silently agrees to follow him into the mist. As per Aiko's order, a strange man infiltrates the academy with the intention of destroying the demon beast controlling device. To provide backup, Eiko and her army make their way inside the academy only to learn that entering school grounds is prohibited. Being the student council president, Lily creates a clear boundary between the academy and the army. She also knows that Eiko is the one who murdered her father in cold blood, which shocks the world. To erase all evidence, she orders her men to start attacking Lily. Thankfully, two of her comrades make an appearance to save the day. The vice captain is also busy inside the academy as she helps the two brothers girls deal with the intruder. Just as things begin to seem normal, Yamato breaches the academy's security and enters the basement. He makes it clear that the principle of identity is curtailed to his plan that will save everyone's lives. However, Keem goes into a strange state only to mention that he needs something else maybe a whack job. With that said, he swiftly slides past both Fujiko and the vice president of the council. Before leaving, he reminds Fujiko that she was the one who first released the demon beast, allowing all the destruction to take place. Even with him gone, the two of them fail to outrun the strange man-like creature chasing them around like you chase around only fangirls. Upon realizing that Lily is dangerous, Eiko calls Junko to assign her a new mission regarding the execution of the council president. However, she knows that Eiko wants to silence Lily for good. Unfortunately, Eiko takes Yuko as a hostage which forces her to comply. Without any alternative, she stands in front of Lily, warning her about the consequences of battle. Despite the arrogant attitude, Lily knows that Aiko has been playing Junko by using Yuko as a hostage. However, before she could take any action, a mysterious man amongst the soldiers opens fire on Aiko's men. Although the man is nothing more than a puppet being controlled from the shadows. Pushed back into a corner, Aiko resorts to her dirty tricks, as she hangs a sword upon Yuko's head. On the other hand, inside the academy, Fujiko utilizes liquid nitrogen to eliminate the opponent once and for all. Back outside, Brave intervenes in the situation and escapes together with Yamato in time. Following this, the mysterious man asks Lily to work with him because their goals are in alignment. Instead, she attacks him with the most powerful move in her arsenal. However, the man just turns out to be another puppet of his, which further shrouds him in mystery. At the same time, Akuto picks up the fleet with his bare hands and insane mana, allowing everyone to take a breath of relief. As he leaves to rescue Kina from Yamato's grasp, Fujiko asks about the special thing that none of the others have. Unexpectedly, he reveals that Kina has something that makes the Demon King cry. All of a sudden, Aiko orders Junko to execute Akuto where he stands. Even her men advise her to follow orders or else her position would be dire. In the heat of the moment, she declares her love for the Demon King and draws the Sacred Blade. In an instant, she defeats all the men surrounding Aiko. However, Karon stops her swing before she recklessly kills her. Out of nowhere, the previous Grand Priest reappears in front of the world, saying that he will make Aiko repent for his deeds. As the second battle ends, Akuto prepares to fight the main antagonists. Amidst the journey, Hiroshi intercepts his path, hoping that he will stop acting recklessly. However, Akuto still insists that he will kill God no matter the price because change is necessary in the world. Furthermore, he will think of something special for him and his new lover Yuko. Despite the kind gesture, the hero of the legends remains hellbent on stopping the Demon King, which gives rise to the legendary battle. Without any thoughts in mind, Akuta charges straight in for the attack. He utilizes the body's enhanced regenerative abilities to hold off his attack. At that moment, Hiroshi explains that the plasma inside the weapon will incinerate him. Yet, he refuses to stop and in doing so forces Hiroshi to release all the energy. As a matter of fact, Akuta wanted him to act recklessly all along, so that the fight between them would end in an instant. Upon reaching the ground, Akuto reveals that he intends to kill God and takes his place in order to become the highest being on the food chain. Meanwhile, Hinamato takes the principle of identity to a divine tree. There, he orders God to display the place of the contract. Yet, the two android guards try to stop him in his tracks. Yet, they have nothing in front of the swing of his sword. After killing the two androids, Yamato learns from Kina that his plans will not work. Even after trying again and again, his empty blonde head hasn't learned his lesson. Despite knowing the outcome of the plan, he forces Kina to force the contract because he wants to make his ego a little bigger. In that instance, Akuto arrives on the scene and shares his thoughts on Yamato's grand plan. And so the fight between the two of them begins, but this time, Akuto ends it pretty fast. Afterwards, the two androids advise him to form a contract with Kina. Yet, he reveals his true intent of destroying God. Following this revelation, the androids explain that God was the one who created the Demon King in order to destroy humanity, but they didn't take into account the fact that he might rebel. Although they will keep this fact in mind the next time God creates another Demon Lord. As for now, they have activated the defense mechanism which will probably make the Sacred Tree go boom. 
As the tree soars into the sky, Yamato regains his consciousness only to ask about his intentions behind the whole thing. In reality, Akuto thinks that living one's life based on their own hearts much nobler than believing in a religion. In order to allow people to have the freedom to choose their own paths, he must sacrifice his abnormal life. However, Kina follows him to the tree in order to protect his life. Inside the tree, Akuto and Peterhausen face a barrage of attacks from the androids. Despite this, they manage to infiltrate the innermost part of the tree where all the mana network lies. According to the plan, Peterhausen connects to the mana within the tree and focuses it to transfer ownership to Akuto. Yet things don't go as planned as Akuto is forced to remove his mana limiters from the body, allowing him access to his full power. Still, to make things worse, the androids open a dimensional barrier to throw them out along with the tree. Even with the power up, Akuto can't manage to handle the intense emotions in the heat of battle. In that instance, Kina appears and hugs him from behind, assuring him that everything will be alright. Suddenly, she meets another version of herself from the future that helps her rewrite some of the story. In doing so, she just created a destiny for Akuto, which is far worse than any demon king has faced. Still, Kina assures her doppelganger that everything will be alright with him. In the end, he manages to destroy the mana network and safely escape. As it turns out, everyone around the world except his harem and Hiroshi have forgotten that Akudo is the new demon king which in turns would allow him to live normally. If you like what you saw, consider subscribing to the channel and stay tuned for more quality uploads.